Hello, and thank you all for joining us today for this educational InnoVise webinar. My name is Caitlin Nyan, and I'm part of the marketing team here in the InnoVise Portland office. In this webinar, Esri and InnoVise will highlight the benefits of utilizing ArcGIS Pro and InfoWater Pro for advanced water systems in engineering and analysis. For those of you who may not be familiar with Innovise, we have a long history of providing high-performing, innovative software solutions. Our intention is to make sure that in your work, you can design, model, review, and manage with confidence. This also means that we strive to provide excellent customer service and support, and that we offer continuing education opportunities like these for engineers and others in the industry. Innovise offers a library of software programs for the design, analysis, and management of water infrastructure, including InfoWater, which you will see today. Now, on with our presentation. I'd like to introduce our presenters. Today's presenters are Brett Singley and Jason Channon. Before joining Innovise, Brett Singley worked as an international consulting firm as the National Distribution System Modeling Lead for the United States. He has worked on dozens of master planning and modeling projects over the years and all over the country, as well as a few international projects. Since joining Innovise in 2015, Brett has used his technical experience to help arm his clients with the right tools and trainings to make their jobs easier. He currently is a sales engineer for the Southwest region after recently transitioning from the product management team in charge of all potable water products and operational and operational analytics. He is passionate about improving workflow processes and using computers to automate the boring parts of our job that don't require critical thinking. Jason is a senior solutions engineer for Esri's global water practice. He joined Esri in 2013 three as an inside sales representative to support the Esri Denver region. He now has a serve he's now serves as a senior solution engineer as part of the Esri Water Practice, specializing in Esri solutions for water, wastewater, stormwater management. His responsibilities include technical leadership, building and delivering industry specific applications, maps, and tools. Jason works closely with Esri customers and the water industry to assess individual agencies' needs and ensure their success using the ArcGIS platform. Thank you again for joining us. Would you like to start our discussion, Brett? Yes. Um, so here's our agenda for today. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming in and watching this webinar. We're going to start off with Jason. He's going to talk to us a lot about uh, using ArcGIS Pro for water utility engineering. He'll go over some of the difference between ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap, show you some of the things that are new with ArcGIS Pro, and throughout, kind of smattered throughout that presentation, he'll be doing actual live demonstration in the product. Then I'll take over and I'll talk about doing distribution system modeling inside uh, ArcGIS Pro with InfoWater Pro, a product that will be released shortly. And I will focus on kind of the UI improvements that we've made, why it's important to model inside of ArcGIS, and uh, end with a, a demonstration as well. With that, we'll jump straight over to Jason. This morning, I would like to talk to you about ArcGIS Pro. I'm sure many of you are aware that Esri has two ArcGIS desktop applications. We've had ArcMap now for quite some time, which features Arc Catalog, Arc Scene, and Arc Globe as well as many different extensions to enhance uh, the capabilities of ArcMap. Um, a while back, we released ArcGIS Pro, which is really the next generation suite of tools for ArcGIS Desktop. ArcGIS Pro is the primary environment that we use to publish information into your mapping portals, whether that be ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. Information layers and web maps from those mapping portals are then used by ArcGIS applications for lots of users within an organization to get access to that information. And then of course, all of this is available for developers and partners to be able to build upon and extend the ArcGIS platform. So why did we build ArcGIS Pro? Well, um, one of the main reasons was to support modern computing infrastructure. Uh, ArcMap was, was built quite some time ago, and with you know, the advances in computing technology, organizations really needed to be able to harness that power of desktops to be able to do their work. So we built ArcGIS Pro to support 64-bit and multi-threaded environments. We also wanted to be able to simplify the user interface 
Um, as many of you know who have worked with ArcMap over the years, you know that there's lots and lots of different toolbars, and at times you need to use all of those toolbars, and that really creates a, a real estate problem within the interface. So we wanted to kind of simplify the interface and make only the tools necessary for what you're doing at that time available and, and taking up valuable real estate. ArcGIS Pro is also integrated with our entire platform, meaning that you can bring WebGIS layers and maps into Pro, and you can also use Pro to publish out WebGIS and web maps. We also combine the 2D mapping experience with 3D. Previously, those were separate applications that you had to launch with ArcMap. Now that whole experience is built right into ArcGIS Pro. Customers were also asking for the ability to have multiple maps and multiple layouts within their map application to be able to support different projects and things that were going on. So that's something else that we built into ArcGIS Pro. Uh, it also features all of the analysis tools and capabilities that were available with ArcMap um, and enables people to author and share web maps and layers seamlessly across the entire platform. So the interface for ArcGIS Pro is new. It's um, contextually based, meaning that if you click on a menu, then you get a whole set of tools as part of the ribbon. And I'm gonna highlight some of this through my demonstration. Uh, it's also very user intuitive, meaning that you can sort of navigate through ArcGIS Pro and be able to find and understand the tools that you need to use very easily. ArcGIS Pro is project based. So you can organize all of the different maps and, and 3D scenes and geodatabases and everything within your project rather than having to do it in a separate file structure and navigating to those individual pieces separately. It's also map focused. Really at the heart of ArcGIS Pro is the ability to have multiple maps or multiple 3D scenes all within the same environment. And of course it's integrated in all aspects of our platform. ArcGIS Pro is a fusion of different applications. So previously with ArcMap, you had ArcMap, you had Arc Catalog, there was ArcGlobe and ArcScene and City Engine. All of those has, have been built right into the ArcGIS Pro application. So you don't have to leave that application if you need to start to do some data management or if you want to do something in 3D or start to apply you know, real life graphics to 3D scenes and buildings with something like City Engine. Mapping and visualization was a heavy component to the development of ArcGIS Pro. We really wanted to improve the drawing and performance quality um, for the end user experience. Um, we added the ability to have multiple layouts so you can create multiple maps uh, that serve different purposes all within the same project. Uh, a big focus on uh, enhancing the symbology model as well as things like transparency and 3D cartography. We also added an enhanced map series capabilities and uh, enabled animations throughout ArcGIS Pro. So with that, I'm gonna hop into a quick tour of ArcGIS Pro. So this is not ArcGIS Pro, this is ArcMap, as many of you are probably familiar with. But what I wanted to highlight first was that um, with ArcGIS Pro, you can use Pro and ArcMap side by side. So if you're transitioning and you need to use both applications, you can do that all in the same desktop environment, running both applications simultaneously. This is ArcGIS Pro. You'll notice that the map that I was just looking at in ArcMap is, is basically identical. I was able to quickly import this map from ArcMap using this insert and import map tool. And it took just a minute to run, but you can see that nothing's changed. My symbology is all the same, my map is the same, so you don't have to build and create new maps. You can work with your existing maps that you've been working with in ArcMap right within ArcGIS Pro. Some of the enhancements though, include the ability just to click on features. No longer do I need to launch an identify tool to actually click on a feature and get at the information. Uh, much like we can in WebGIS, I can just simply click on a feature and get access to the pop-up that has all of the information about the features that I need. I mentioned the ribbon interface. So if I click on any one of these menus here, we'll click on the uh, analysis menu, and you can see that here's the ribbon. These are all of the analysis tools and capabilities that are available underneath that menu. I mentioned Arc Catalog. Arc Catalog is also built into ArcGIS Pro. 
So if I want to, I can view uh, a catalog view. So I can actually work with catalog along with other panes. If I wanted to do some geoprocessing, I could do that sort of thing as well. Um, but I can also work with catalog just within my map. So I have a catalog pane here that I can work with and I can actually pin so that it's uh, permanent over here. But when I don't want to work with it, I can also hide that. So within catalog, I can connect to all of my organization's information. I can connect to my content from my mapping portal. Um, you can see here I'm logged into a, a portal environment. I can connect to all of my um, project information right within Pro. I can connect to groups, so any groups that I'm a part of, I can get access to the information in those groups. And I can also search any information that's available in my portal. And lastly, I can integrate with the Living Atlas. So in this case, I can search out for different layers or I can browse the catalog of Living Atlas layers. Perhaps I wanted to bring some soil information and look at soil corrosivity um, for certain areas of, of my uh, organization or, or my uh, utilities boundary. I could bring in that information right from the Living Atlas right into ArcGIS Pro. One of the other things that's really great about ArcGIS Pro is the ability to work inside of multiple different maps. So I have a couple of different maps open here, and I can work inside of these maps um, across all of the different maps just by simply going to the, the tabs themselves. One of the other things I want to uh, highlight with ArcGIS Pro is something we call tasks. And so tasks enable you to start to define workflows that you might want to share out with other people. So if you have an advanced editing workflow that you've created and you want somebody else to be able to utilize that, you can come in here and create tasks. And a good example of tasks is something called the ArcGIS Solutions Deployment Tool. Now this is an add-in to ArcGIS Pro. If I go to my sharing dialog here, I can choose the ArcGIS Solutions add-in, and you can see I've got a series of tasks associated with that add-in. One of the tasks is to sign into the ArcGIS organization. I'm already signed in, but if I wasn't, it would prompt me to do that. Um, and I can deploy solutions. So these, this points to any of the solutions that are available from Esri. And we've got multiple different industry solutions here. One of those happens to be water. And I could click on any one of these solutions. So if I wanted to, let's say, deploy a leak investigation solution, I could highlight that. I could click deploy. And that would publish out the services and the maps to my uh, ArcGIS Online or Portal organization. I can come in here and use another task, which would be to configure the solution. I could then add some fields, create some domains, and actually work within um, that solution itself. And then lastly, this task would allow me to load data. So tasks are really a great way of um, sharing out complex workflows and also documenting those workflows. We'll hop back into the presentation here. Um, I wanted to also introduce really quickly um, some new capability and some new terminology that you might um, have already heard about. So for years, uh, Esri has had a solution for uh, utilities to be able to manage um, infrastructure information within GIS and manage the connectivity of those GIS features. We called that the geometric network, and that worked inside of ArcMap. Well, as technologies progressed and um, we see things like uh, IoT and, and more sensors and devices. Organizations really need a more modern approach to modeling those connections to our real world and being able to understand uh, the real-time connectivity of um, utility network features with those, with those sensors. And so um, we came out with this ArcGIS Utility Network Management Extension. Um, and it's enabled through ArcGIS Enterprise as an enterprise level extension. It's not a desktop extension, it's an enterprise level extension that's available starting at 10.6. And really what the Utility Network does is it enables utilities to model in much greater detail than ever before. It also enables better visualization and analytics through a tracing framework and being able to create things like subnetworks of pressure zones or DMAs, which are district metered areas. And it also enables network capability and access across our entire platform. 
And that was something that the geometric network really didn't support well. It was really more of just a database-centric and ArcMap-centric approach to managing information. Now with the utility network, it's enabled through maps. We've always been able to create maps, but now our maps are much smarter, have more capability built into them. The utility network also enables uh, the creation of schematics tied into your GIS. So now you can work with schematics side by side with your map. You can also start to model component views, really complex structures and go inside of things like pump stations and be able to model the inner workings of those complex uh, structures. The utility network also provides advanced analytical capability through that tracing framework that I mentioned and being able to define subnetworks and understand the features that are inside of those subnetworks. The utility network also enables looking at historical and planned views. So you can roll back to a certain point in time and see what did our network look like a couple of months or years ago. What will it look like in several months or years based on our planned development? And of course, the, the utility network also fully supports working in 3D. So one of the other big focuses for uh, ArcGIS Pro is really enhancing the editing environment. You can edit in both 2D and 3D. We really wanted to simplify the edit session, meaning that no longer do you have to go in, start an edit session, point to your workspace. You're just always editing. You have the ability to just edit features, save features, discard features. You can also still edit in a versioned environment. You can edit enterprise and file geodatabases. Um, and we also enhanced the ability to create templates for editing. And I'm going to highlight some of that in my next demonstration. Um, you can work with geodatabase and map topology. And ArcGIS Pro is really starting to be more like a CAD-based sort of editing experience and some of that um, tool capability. ArcGIS Pro features a rich suite of analysis tools. So I showed the analysis ribbon earlier. These are all of the capabilities. You can get to all of your toolboxes and things through the ribbon. Uh, it features the majority of tools from ArcMap. And you can also work with the geoprocessing pane. So you can have your map open, you can be working with geoprocessing, and that's really how you'll access all of the analytical tools is through geoprocessing. Model Builder is, of course, built in, so you can work with models side by side with your maps or scenes. Um, and likewise, the same experience with Python. You can be working in Python and also have access to your maps. Um, we feature utility network analysis capabilities as well as image and raster analysis capabilities as well. And then really lastly, heavy emphasis on sharing, right? Being able to promote the work that you do inside of desktop throughout the organization by sharing web maps and sharing 3D web scenes. You can of course still share map and layer packages like you could in ArcMap, but now you can share your entire pro package. So if you work on something and you want to share that with somebody else, you can actually share your entire pro package. They'll get the pro map documents, they'll get any tools that are associated with that, the data that's associated with that, all wrapped up into a nice package. You can create map and layout files, and you can share those tasks. So if you author tasks to help somebody else with a workflow, you can actually share those tasks with your organization and anybody can grab those and use them. You also have the ability to share your symbology. So as you start to create um, complex symbology, you can share that throughout the organization as well. All right, so let's hop into another demonstration here of ArcGIS Pro. So I want to highlight some of the capability of the utility network. So this is an example of modeling a pump station. And so we see here the pump station on the map. We have a polygon representing the structure, and we have some line work coming into and out of the pump station. One of the things I can do with the utility network is actually go inside of this pump station and visualize what's inside there and actually model the inner working of this pump station. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, and I'm going to do something called entering containment. So I can simply select my polygon here and enter containment mode. And as I enter containment mode, I see more features. So now I see the individual valves, the pumps, and the flow meters, and all of the fittings that are inside of this pump station here. And I can interact with this information. 
So if I want to be able to start to understand um, some of the connections in here, I can do that. So I can modify my uh, associations. I can also choose what's visible at certain scales. So if I want some of this stuff to actually be visible outside of containment, I can do that as well. I can check the boxes here for all the individual layers and make those uh, visible outside of my container. And I can start to mo uh, model and understand the connectivity of these features. So if I click on this flow valve here, I can modify um, the terminal configuration. So I click on this flow valve here and you can see that this flow valve has an inlet port. So now I can start to model the in and the out flow of specific devices. If I zoom in a little bit further here, you can see that there's also a flow valve here that's associated with this, uh, or a flow meter associated with this flow valve. Now, traditionally, if we wanted these two things to be connected, we would have to put them right on top of each other and they would have to be coincident or they would have to be right on the line together. But with the utility network, we don't have to do that anymore. We can model what we call associations. So if I click on the view associations mode here, I can see that there's an association between this meter and this valve. If I click on the valve, I can also see that it's, a, or I click on the meter here, I can see that it's attached to the valve through the outlet port. So the valve has an inlet port, and then it the, also has an outlet port, which is attached to this meter here. If I start to zoom back out here, I can see that my, um, map is getting a little bit cluttered, so I can simply exit containment. So I've exited the containment mode, I can turn off my associations, and now I have a regular view of my map. But any analysis that I do can honor all of those features inside of that container if I choose to allow that. So let's uh, take a look at some editing capabilities here. One of the things I want to do is add a new hydrant, uh, fire hydrant to this map. So I can go over here to editing, and by choosing edit and create, I can get access to all of my edit templates. Now you can create these edit templates from scratch. These ones were actually created as part of the solution that I used to deploy uh, this utility network. So as we did all of the work ahead of time in creating all of these different templates here. One of the things that's um, great and new with Pro is the ability to work with group templates. So I wanna add a six inch wet hydrant with a service. So I can come down here and do that, and I can see all of the tools that are involved with creating this uh, assembly here, and all of the different layers that are associated as well. So if I click on that, I can um, snap to my main here. Oops. Try that one more time here. I can simply snap to my main, drop a couple of points here, and now I've created a hydrant assembly. I didn't have to go in and separately add all of the different features. We'll give this just a second here to uh, finish creating. And if I clear my selection here, we can see as I zoom in, I have the fitting, I have the hydrant service line, I have the valve and I have the fire hydrant. And these can all be pre-configured with certain attributes um, and certain default values as well. So ArcGIS Pro enables you to really streamline the editing process. And because I'm using a utility network, it's actually enforcing some connectivity rules so I can be assured that this hydrant is connected to this line here. So the last thing I wanna talk about is, is some of the analysis capabilities. So I mentioned the analysis ribbon here. I can get to uh, my tools. So these are all of the toolboxes that are available here to me. Uh, I also have a set of ready to use tools. So some of the commonly used tools can be found here. And then I have a tool gallery. So if I have commonly used tools that I work with every day, I can simply drag those tools into my gallery here and have access to those uh, tools within the gallery. Now, one of the uh, analysis capabilities I want to highlight is tracing. So with the subnetwork, or with the uh, utility network, we have the ability to perform tracing. And so I have all of these different pre-configured traces here that I could use. And when I click on one of those, it's going to launch for me in the geoprocessing pane 
the actual trace with all of the parameters. And I would go ahead and go in and set up all of my parameters to be able to conduct this trace. Now a common tracing function is um, tracing within subnetworks or defining subnetworks. So here you can see that I've got on my map here uh, various different subnetworks, and these represent uh, pressure zones. And these different pressure zones are defined by subnetwork controllers. So these subnetwork controllers for the pressure uh, zones would be a pressure reducing valve that would define the boundary for this particular area. Now I can toggle this off here and I want to actually look at a different type of um, subnetwork and that is the um, uh, a, a DMA area here. And let me switch back over here and I can turn off my pressure zones and now I can look at my DMA areas. Give the map here a second to refresh, turn off my water lines. There we go. There's the subnetworks that I was talking about. So these subnetworks are the result of a trace. And so you can see that these DMA areas here are defined by these uh, district meters for this particular area. And if I highlight or click on uh, these particular DMAs here, I can see that there's some analysis that took place um, when this was ran. It's actually querying out for me here. Um, and calculating all of the different hydrants and the service valves that are associated with this individual sub DMA area, right? So PRO in the utility network enables you to do very sophisticated tracing and start to define certain areas um, within your sub network. So I'm just gonna switch back here to the PowerPoint and I've got just a couple of slides here to wrap up before we go ahead and turn it over to Brett. So licensing options for ArcGIS Pro, there are three uh, ways in which you can license ArcGIS Pro. You can license Pro with a single user license or a concurrent user license, just like you can do with ArcMap today. Or you can also uh, license Pro through the named user model. If any of you are using ArcGIS online, you're probably familiar with that named user license. And if you have uh, ArcMap licensing today that's current on maintenance, the good news is that you already have access to ArcGIS Pro, so you can contact Esri and start using that today if you haven't already. So lastly, I just wanna share with you some uh, migration resources. If you're in the process of migrating over to ArcGIS Pro, there is a wealth of training classes. We have both instructor-led training, we have virtual self-paced training, uh, there are tons of videos. If you go out on YouTube, there's lots of different videos from Esri on ArcGIS Pro. Um, one of my favorites is the learn lessons. So if you go to learn.arcgis.com, you can take many of the different learn lessons that'll help walk you through workflows or things like getting started with ArcGIS Pro. Of course, we've got a wealth of blogs and information out there, lots of books that have been published, uh, GeoNet, and then a great place to look is also the help documentation, very rich help documentation for ArcGIS Pro. So hopefully that gives you an overview of ArcGIS Pro and some of the things that you can start to do within your water, uh, sewer, or stormwater utility today. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Brett. Excellent. So uh, while we're switching, I'm going to launch a poll for everyone to chime in on here. Uh, so you guys should be able to see this poll. The question is, is what is your plan for moving to ArcGIS Pro? So I've, uh, you know, we've been hearing about this a lot more lately. Uh, I know that we have people in all of these categories. I'm pretty sure uh, this group might skew one way or the other, but we're uh, interested to find out uh, if you have a plan yet, if you've got a plan with no timeline, if you uh, don't have a plan at all, or if you've already been waiting for us to have an info water. Uh, that can work on ArcGIS Pro because you've already been using Pro. I'll let that go a little bit longer. Uh, 
or not. Got about 75% of the people voted. And uh, I'll just let you guys know that the uh, the biggest winner, the majority of people have a plan with no timeline. So that's very interesting. Hopefully this gives you guys a, a reason to maybe start talking about it a little bit more. But we do have a good chunk that are already there and, and waiting. This is excellent. All right, I'll go ahead and close that poll. And I will start, start sharing my screen again. All right, so uh, back to my part, distribution system modeling with InfoWater Pro. Uh, we're gonna first talk about our user interface improvements that we've, that we've made. So you already kind of saw the ribbon. Uh, up here is our, our old school InnoVise. Uh, so we have quite a few of these on this uh, old ArcMap view. Uh, we've had several of the very small icons be criticized that they didn't really know what they were trying to, to reference. This is probably the number one uh, thing there, this art palette to do our map display. Um, this is one of the first things that you'll see. One of the big differences you'll see inside of uh, InfoWater Pro is that you've got a dedicated modeling toolbar. Uh, it's not mixed in with other, with other things. Everything on here directly relates to your hydraulic model. I'll, I'll note too that you can also take uh, some of those really commonly used GIS functions like uh, doing a selection or clearing your selection. You can put those up on top uh, so that if you use something a lot, you don't have to switch between the ribbons very often. Another big change is that beloved InfoWater button that, that we use to drop down, and especially when you're in a model build or trying to kind of update a model and trying to figure out where you might have connectivity problems or, or updating the model. Uh, we used to have this tree that people were very used to, and, and uh, it's always, it's always scary when you're changing things because someone's going to not like it. So what we did was we uh, we put it into uh, what's now called the command center. You can see your normal model explorer things are here. The attribute and the operations tabs are still there, but we've added the command center. And I'll show you what that feels like and, and how much better that is when you actually do have to go and do these connectivity things uh, kind of one after the other. So those are two of the big things, the, the common times where you're going to say, oh, I used to know where this was, now I don't. Uh, this setup is identical to what the setup was here. So if you're familiar with where the button was before, you will be able to find it again quite easily. Now I want to talk quickly about why we want to model in ArcGIS Pro. And frankly, most of these things are why we wanted to model in ArcMap in the first place. Um, so we're, we, I guess the, the number one reason is most of the data that you use for hydraulic modeling is already sitting in GIS. All of the facilities that you're, you're importing, uh, if you use a standalone product or you, you create a model somewhere else, uh, you have to go and, and usually kind of clean up the data and, and, and do that and then bring it into your model. I love the fact that when you're modeling inside of InfoWater, you are you are doing it right where that data natively is seen and, and edited. Um, the next one is that it's easy to easy to update. I'm not gonna go into this in detail. I'll show you the screen when I do the demo, but uh, we've had the GIS gateway for a long time. It has come with us. Uh, it's, it's come to InfoWater Pro. There are videos that you can use that will go in a lot more detail than I'll go in our in our demo today. But this is how you can keep a model up to date. It's, it's the most amazing way to bring in new pipes, new valves, bring in uh, valves that are in your GIS that are not hydraulically important, that are just isolation valves. You can bring them in as junctions. All the different ways that you might want to model a GIS gateway can make sure that you keep your model up to date as far as the facilities are concerned. Interacting with important non-modeling features. So the other real benefit is because all of the data that you're trying to interact with uh, is already natively inside of GIS, like your uh, meter IDs in this one, uh, you can use those things to do 
model related things with with layers that are not uh, explicitly in the model or used in the model. And I'll show off a few ways that we can do that uh, in the demonstration also. And lastly, um, to be able to do it all in one program. So we wanted you to not have to fix all your GIS and then import it into a standalone product and then have to go into your calibration in a spreadsheet and then get your AMI data uh, all figured out in another software and then bring it back. If you want to do a unidirectional flushing program, to have to, to do that in a separate product, we wanted to be inside Esri where all this data was so that you don't have to leave. Uh, and that's been kind of a big focus of ours. If, if you've seen uh, some of the things we've been doing with the ability to, to calibrate models with SCADA Watch Connect, um, where it changed our, you know, from the old methods where you'd have to cut and paste the results into Excel and make your own diurnal patterns and things like that. Uh, it changed calibration uh, in one good example from a month-long process to a two-day process. And now we'll jump right into the product and we'll show off what it looks like. I think the first thing that most people that have used InfoWater uh, will realize is just how much, you know, Jason mentioned a lot about uh, the map improvements and the speed improvements. Um, really want to showcase how uh, how responsive this is compared to what uh, people may have had to deal with in the past. So I can come in here, I can be looking at something over here in, in my model explorer, I can go over here and it's instantly on. I've got a ton of layers, background imagery on um, all of my meters. This just would lag uh, quite a bit on the, the old system, which if you take off the layers and stuff, it it works well, but now you can actually just do it live with them all connected. Um, one of the one of the other things that you'll notice when you look at the the InfoWater toolbar is you'll you'll see some things are a lot more a lot more uh, obviously there, I guess, with with that with that toolbar that was so hard to get into and and to find the some of our other features and our extensions um, a lot of people that have been modeling for a really long time haven't seen a ton of these other extensions that came with the suite or the executive suite of infowater in the past um, so I just wanted to to kind of show off here a good example of one if I've been to your office, you've probably seen me show you this one before. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, this is a really good example of why it's important to be inside of GIS. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a contamination study. Protector is a really cool feature that, that allows you to do some very specific analysis without having to go in and create a brand new scenario that would set up the features a certain way. This This allows you to really quickly tell what's going to happen. So in this example, we're going to assume that there's a contamination right right here. Maybe there's a faulty backflow preventer. And we're saying it happens at 4 a.m. and it happens for three hours. So all I have to do is hit run here and it will automatically figure out who will be affected by that in three hours, right? This is where that contamination could have spread within the three hours. And again, that's all just hydraulics. Still pretty impressive how fast it was able to do that and, and the calculations it did there. But the really cool part, because we're inside of ArcGIS, I can hit the notify button and instantly I know all of the parcels and all the customers that are gonna be affected by that. So after three hours, 169 customers uh, could be notified that we have, you know, boil water notice because someone had a faulty backflow preventer. I could also then go back and do the same study and say, okay, well, what if we couldn't get it closed by three hours? Um, rerun that really quick and see how much worse it gets. So it went from about 170 
to a little bit broader area here now, and now it's 370. So we more than doubled in that in that time period. So this is just one really easy example of of why uh, it's great to be able to interact with the some of the uh, feature classes and the different elements that are not directly model related. Um, another one that I love to show off is if I zoom in here, we've got all of these little dots here are our meter files. I showed you a quick view of this uh, in the presentation. But if I click on my meter sale, so this has all my, my meter information, I can go and allocate that based on closest pipe or closest junction, whichever one. And I'll show you some, some differences there. Actually, let's go. There's one area that I really like to show what the differences are and the benefits of, of doing closest pipe versus closest junction. So if I go up here, and I can select meters based on closest junction, and it will draw this out for me and show me where each of these things would get allocated if I just used closest junction. This is my great example of the closest junction, maybe this one, but these guys clearly would be on the closest pipe. So it's good to run this analysis a couple different ways just to kind of see how your system's laid out. If you have a lot shorter pipe segments and a lot more junctions along it, then um, it would be more accurate this way. Uh, but barring that, you can, you can at least look at it and compare it to the closest pipe methodology, which again, this is all using using GIS functions that we that we call in the background and able to connect to things that are not natively in your model. So now I can come in here and I can look at these and I say, oh, okay, this is great. Uh, closest pipe was clearly um, the best option here. But let's say for some reason, I knew that this guy, that guy looks wrong. It probably won't matter much in this model because he's probably a small home, but I know that it should be going here instead. I can actually come in here assign a pipe and reassign him and now he's permanently changed so whenever I reallocate my uh, my demands in my model uh, that will be done correctly the first time so I love the the ability to to kind of visually inspect this stuff and see and here's another example where it's probably going to the front yard like the rest of the neighbors and things like that so you can go in there and clean that up once and have a lot more confidence that that your information is being allocated to the to the right spot. Uh, other things that uh, so I guess one other big picture thing I want to I want to mention. Um, I know the question will come: When is it coming out? When is this going to be released? Um, and what's going to what functionality is going to be available? Our, our focus on this first release uh, that will be coming very soon is just making sure we have all of the existing functionality working well uh, that everyone's already come accustomed to. So um, again, all of these elements in here that you see, ensuring that they, you know, they're as, as bug free as, as we can make them and, and ready to, to be tested and and that's what the version that I have is for. So we've been we've been playing with it, and uh, it's been really fun to to play with these release candidates. And I actually, as as Jason was presenting, I just got a, a newer version. Um, but each of these different elements um, took a lot of time to develop originally, and we wanted to make sure that our users that had spent the time to learn them uh, were were benefited by by seeing them come forward. Unidirectional flushing is a product that not a lot of people uh, had had access to. It was a, a great product for, for those that had it. Um, we've made it more prominent here to give people the, the attention that it, that it deserves. Unidirectional flushing helps in a, in a ton of different ways. I'm not gonna go, I've, we've got whole demos that we can give and, and talk to you about the, all the reasons why you would want to do unidirectional flushing. But this is highlighting the fact that, that it's, it's done really simply inside of ArcGIS Pro. Um, 
all the same things that you could do before, but again, improve speed and mapping inside of ArcGIS Pro. So all of this stuff is just happening um, much quicker and with all the background layers on and, and those things available to you. Another thing that, that we want to highlight is, I showed it on the last screen a little bit, is kind of our demand analyst. So this is the ability to bring in uh, AMI information and to aggregate that and to help make better curves in your model based on real data that's coming in uh, live from your system. And then one that we talk about quite often, uh, especially since I was the product manager for both of these, um, is our skater run inside of InfoWater, InfoWater Pro, the ability to, to use Skater Watch Connect uh, to, to bring in data directly from Skater Watch and update all of your boundary conditions for your tanks and your pumps, bring in curves from, from the system to be able to update um, any kind of diurnal patterns and things like that that you have. I'll see if this is connected well. It was working this morning, there we go. So you can see different kind of patterns that you might use for a high demand user or for a specific, um, for a specific zone in your system. So our, our big focus again was the ability to, to try to get all this data in the model making it easy for you to use so you never have to leave, you never have to, to export things to a different format so that you can use it somewhere else. And a last little piece of eye candy that InfoWater users have known for a long time, again, because it's all geospatial, we know where we are, we can uh, easily go in and, and kind of truth check something out in the field and see, you know, is there actually a hydrant out here? Um, you know, do we have our water our little valve plug there. Uh, just a nice way to be able to interact with this stuff because it is all geospatially uh, done so well. Yes, there are some good ones here. There's quite a bit about the utility network. Uh, do you have, I guess, Jason, you might have been looking at the questions a little bit longer. Do you have any in particular that you wanted to, to hit that you saw multiples of? Yeah, I think there's a couple things I can address just based on the, the question. So one of the questions was, you know, is this all based off of the utility network? Um, it's not. So the info water um, tools that you've seen are not, uh, do not require the utility network at this point. Um, I just wanted to really give everybody, you know, sort of an introduction to the, the utility network. Um, there were some questions about, you know, the geometric network versus the utility network. The question, can I create um, uh, geometric networks with a basic, or I can create geometric networks with a basic license with an enter, without an enterprise license, will this functionality be ported to pro? So um, just to kind of clarify uh, on that for a second. So with the geometric network in ArcMap today, that requires that you have a standard level desktop license to create and edit, but it does not require that you have ArcGIS Enterprise. The utility network is all services based. So users don't actually inter interact directly with the database anymore. It's all services based. And that's why it requires ArcGIS Enterprise is to be able to manage all of those um, services. So it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one replacement of the, the geometric network. It's really a whole new approach to managing uh, utility network information within GIS. So that's why it does require that you have an enterprise license to use uh, the utility network. And anybody that's got questions, you know, certainly reach out to, to Esri. We would be more than happy to, you know, work with you and your organization on, you know, helping you understand more about uh, the utility network. A um, couple more questions here on utility network. One was, um, do containment association views work out in the field? Um, for instance, uh, show a butterfly valve in the location of an operating nut in the street. Um, at this point, the containment is really only limited to working inside of ArcGIS Pro, um, but it is on the roadmap to really extend all of that functionality throughout the platform. So you'll be able to, in some of our mobile applications, be able to use things like containment and do some of the tracing and things like that uh, in, in future releases. Awesome. I uh, There's more questions than I've ever seen in any of these webinars, so we have a lot to, to respond to later. We won't be able to do all of them. A couple more, though, that uh, 
jumped on. I've seen several that are asking the question about kind of the file structure for InfoWater and if you have an InfoWater model and, and an InfoWater Pro. So these files, for those of you that have done this modeling before, this is kind of where all the InfoWater stuff is being held. You can use either the new ArcGIS Pro format or the old MXDs to open those same files. So similar to before, if you've got the model, with this, or the file with the same name and have it in the same place as your IWDB folder, uh, you can transfer those models back and forth. All that structure is identical. So uh, you don't have to necessarily wait till someone else upgrades, uh, you know, till all your clients are ready to move with you or anything like that if you're a consultant or um, anything like that. So the, the models are easily shared back and forth between them. The only thing that would change is if someone has done it in Pro, some of the, you have to kind of reconnect the, the just GIS layers that, that were in the model for them in the, in the old view. But all the actual core modeling stuff is all there perfectly without having to do anything. Uh, also, several questions about, and I'll get my information up here so people can uh, ask direct questions later too. Um, and I can forward any uh, specific ones out to Jason as well. But um, I guess some of the other questions are upgrade pricing and all those extensions that we kind of showed off. Um, those details are going to be coming very, very, very soon. Um, we are just, we're, we're very close to launch. As I mentioned today, I just got one of the last re uh, release candidates uh, in my email for some last minute testing. Um, we should be seeing it soon, and if you if you are looking at it for budgeting reasons and and need to get quotes on prices, uh, you can start to talk to your your sales reps about that, um, so that you can you can game plan for your budgeting uh, reasons. We don't want you to to wait and miss that timeline if if that's the case. Uh, we can have those detailed discussions, but. Um, yeah, the the main focus was let's get everything that people are already used to, and, and let's make it, let's get it in there, let's get it fast, and let's get it dependable. And now the developers are really excited because they get to play with a lot of actually a lot of the questions that I'm seeing here are, in some cases, feature requests and and ideas that we've already been talking about a lot of the time. Um, so there will be a little bit different structure on how the suites and executive suite and things are, um, make it a little bit simpler for everyone. And so I look forward to that announcement and uh, there will be more on pricing as that comes as well. Anything else urgent that you think needs answering, Jason? Should we call it a day? Yeah, no, there are quite a few questions in there, but I think, you know, we covered a lot of it. Um, again, you know, with the utility network questions, we'll do our best to answer those. And then, you know, for the Esri customers, you know, specifically if you work with somebody at Esri, please reach out to us. You know, we would be more than happy to have conversations with you and, and really help you fully understand the utility network. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Have a good day. Thank you.